Have you thought of breaking through? Ain't it part of what you do? Catch a victim while he's dumb. Break his larynx with your well, thumb. Tight time. It's time to get high. Well, this ain't no goddamn dream. It's exactly what it seems. Wake up today just to lay back down and say I won't be coming back let's call it a heart attack give me some of that knack this is just a final payback they all flipped on me took my passions left me be when I had a place to sit and God welcome back, boys and girls, for another special edition of the Michael Deacon Program. Joining me in a moment is the return of Oli Damagard. He is an author, international speaker, and of course a former journalist, musician, composer, inventor, and investigator. He has dedicated the last 35 years to researching many of the global conspiracies. You've heard him all over the place, and he is considered somewhat of a world-leading expert on false flag operations, and tonight we'll cover a whole lot of that. We hope you stay tuned. Now, without further ado, let's bring in our guest, Oli Damagard. Oh, no, no. So it's, I, I just feel very, it's often when I'm out of balance, then, then it comes there. If I feel no support around me, then mm -hmm. it's be, you know, between my shoulder blades. And if I'm overloaded uh, of whatever in the world, then it's my upper, upper shoulders. So oh, my. the body is interesting. I it think. is. It really is. You, you really don't quite um at, at first you don't really understand how important it is and how everything is connected to to everything obviously mm. it's your body obviously you're connected but you really don't realize how much of an impact it, it will cause i tell you uh, you better listen <laughs> all right <laughs> i agree um, but yeah welcome back to the program Oli. it's been a long long time it's might have been four four months now or five months now since you uh, last were here here I have no idea, Michael. It feels like yesterday, but at the same time, when you see see what's going on in the world, it feels forever and ever. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, the last time you hear, not not a lot had transpired at the time. But my goodness, look how fast everything picked up. And Oli, you know, I, I hate to bring this up right away here, but I I didn't tell you this at first, but I actually got a number of emails from uh, listeners after the last time you were here. And they weren't very pleased with what you had to say in terms of America. They were quite offended. And I was defending you. I was saying, look, he, he's not he's not anti-American or anything like that. You're going a little overboard. He was just explaining some of the things that our country does. Um, everyone wants to point fingers at everyone when everyone's doing virtually the same thing. All, all um, I, well, I don't want to say terrorist sort of activities, but. I mean, our country, America, isn't exactly innocent, per se. I tell you, just like you say, I'm not here to point fingers. I'm here to point out facts. And it is a fact that uh, the U.S. as a country has started like a hundred times more military conflicts or got involved in um, more than at least a hundred times more than any other nation in the world. So look at your history, look at your background. I, I tell you, and from Chip Tatum, who was, uh, uh, Chip Tatum is a CIA whistleblower who was the pilot for all the presidents from Nixon onwards to all the way up to George Bush Sr. He was also the commander of his uh, private hit team called Pegasus, part of taking out at least 40 people. He was, he is a heavyweight from the inside. And he's been in the military his whole life since he was 19. And he says, and he's not the only one saying, that the terror tool of the world, in the world, is the U.S. military. Not saying that they're doing it uh, on purpose. I mean, the soldiers, absolutely not. Completely duped. This is the tragic thing. So, well, if I have ups uh, upset anyone, not my intention. I'm just saying, stating the facts. And uh, maybe I don't know what I said, but I'm sh uh, I stand by every single word. Also, what I want to say is that uh, uh, the difference between uh, the U.S. and other countries like Bali, for instance, or Indonesia, 
is the way that many, many problems are being solved by violence, calling for violence. And uh, we are in a situation in the world where I think there's an art violence. We need to find another way because violence just uh, creates more violence and death and and uh, despair and dis uh, you know absolute horror and sadness and sorrow. It it uh, is not the way forward. That is my take. And I agree with you 100%. I don't think the answer for violence is also violence. I think that's insane. And so many people here in this country are, I, I guess you can say they're, they're sort of like in trouble now by their peers, by basically the world almost now because they are supporting Palestine and not Israel. So now you're mm -hmm. anti-Semitic here. Yeah, but I mean, I think that anti-Semitic, that's a really funny word for you. If you check out the real meaning of it, it just, uh, it is not uh, the the public opinion or the, right. uh, is that it's about uh, uh, Jewish people yeah. or people of Jewish faith. It's not at all. It includes Arabs and it includes uh, people in that area of the world. So being anti-Semite, it makes no sense whatsoever. What the powers that are behind the Jewish people, I'm not pointing at the Jewish people or the Israelis as uh, such, but the ones that are behind it are, it's rotten to the core. It, they really, really are, and their acts are monstrous. And they're hiding behind uh, the Jewish uh, sort of front window Actually, when they're not Jews themselves, they're Zionists and they they have a completely different agenda, and they're they're hurting the the Israelis as much or or even more than than other people as well. So it's like a really, besides the the Jewish and the Holocaust is used as a defense uh, wall, so that you can't even point fingers uh, in that direction. If you look at the number of people that are Behind this, I'm talking about people like Benjamin Netanyahu and, and so on. If you look at this man, his actions, the only thing as an objective journalist, you would just like, oh my God, we're looking at somebody with the capability and uh, the, a history of monstrous uh, acts of violence and uh, uh, crimes against humanity. I mean, Henry Kissinger is, is another one, but they many of the people that are behind this whole agenda have double citizenship. They have Israeli citizenship and US right. citizenship. And if you look at the number, had that, I mean, I was born in Denmark, had people with Danish citizenship been involved in as many places because it's unbelievable. Uh, when you look into these uh, uh, wars, if you look into the way that the world is being manipulated through multinational companies, through all kinds of... If you look at the number of, of these individuals that are sitting in key power positions around the world, it is staggering. Had that been Danes doing that, everybody would be talking about a Danish, uh, a Danish conspiracy, a global conspiracy of Danes or Swedes or whatever. But here, just because they come from a special group uh, that is behind... Uh, hiding behind Israel, then then we're not allowed. And uh, the way I see it, I go wherever the truth takes me. Uh, it is not comfortable, I tell you that, and it's not uh, a pleasant thing to do either. But uh, as far as I see, it's uh, like just like if you have a, a beautiful, beautiful body, but it's infested with cancer, uh, cancer term, uh, tumors, and so on. You have to find the tumors. You have to find. The metastasis and so that we can expose them and and uh, and it and take them out of this beautiful body so that right. it can heal itself but until we do that they just keep growing and they cause a lot of very dark stuff in the world absolutely and you know all of this really got started once they showed the picture of that girl the the one that was from germany she's like a half uh, israeli and frank uh, no not Anne frank i mean her name was shani luke she was at that, that festival. Ah, okay. But if you want to go to Israel right away, for sure, let's go for it, uh, or Gaza. Because I would strongly suggest that please look at the world from a global perspective. 
what's right. going on in the world now. It looks like absolute chaos. I would strongly suggest there is a possibility this could be designed chaos from the same power structure in the background just being carried out in different uh, areas of the world. I would strongly suggest what happened in Maui is directly connected to what happened in Gaza. I would strongly connect that is the alleged war in the Ukraine, strongly connected. We're talking about a global attempt, an attempt for a global overtake, and it's being carried out in many different areas of the world, just like on a chessboard. We're not talking about nations. I'm, at least I'm not talking about nations. I'm talking about a handful of uh, people that have selected themselves into these power positions where they're doing their, it's a real attempt to really take over the world according to what is called the new world order right. their own their own words or the fourth industrial revolution through organizations like the world economic forum the bilderberg group the council on foreign relations the trilateral commission the committee of 300 the club of rome all of these are intertangled into a network where they're also being, uh, they're using uh, anonymous companies like BlackRock or Vanguard and these yeah. companies where we have to find out who is hiding behind these, uh, you know, like uh, mirror walls of, of uh, uh, incredible buildings where behind them we have no idea what's going on, but you see the result out in the world. That's right. Uh, a lot of these places are having all kinds of money funneled into them and by, by the way what, what i was referring to what was just the the propaganda that's been spreading online and they used this young girl who was at the festival back uh, october 7th when the hamas uh, militant people went in and attacked them and we'll get into that for a second but i was just saying uh, th this woman was basically used to um drama up the, the sound of war you know a lot of people were outraged they were angry and there was reports that this woman had been beheaded and then that she was in the hospital. Now the mom's saying she can't find her. So um, all these uh, stories are coming out and a lot of them are maybe BS. And I didn't want to come right out and say, well, this was a false flag. But then the more you look into it and you, you start seeing what was going on out there in Israel with Benjamin and Yahoo, how a lot of the citizens, they wanted to get rid of the guy. And they, they seem to have us stood back from actually responding to the the attack that was going on during the time and they seem to roll out this plan of a genocide right away quicker than they even uh, decided to move in and take care of the hamas militants rather i thought wow all of this is quite orchestrated only it seemed quite suspicious in my opinion can i take you on a little tour absolutely uh, absolutely history lane yes sir of course okay so we had a country called palestine where there was this bearded guy a couple of thousand years ago that lived there his name was jesus and he was wandering around there doing a lot of good stuff and uh, one of his followers were muhammad uh, and so on a lot of the this little area has affected the world in in major ways when it comes to religion and also the position of the that country is very very important in the Middle East because it, it nowadays it uh, very close to Suez Canal very close to the oil uh, uh, what do you call it the oil center the oil the fields yeah eighty yeah. percent of the oil comes from out there yeah also yeah, it's very close to the Persian Gulf you it's close to to Jordan to Syria right. to, I mean these countries are tiny tiny if you if you ever been to Israel, it's like, oh my God, it's like being at Dili Plaza. You can suddenly understand why Jesus was able to walk from Gethsemane to, to Bethlehem to Jerusalem or on a donkey, I tell you, because it is so small. So small, it, wow. It is in, I've been down, yeah. down there and, and uh, to see for myself. So the way this, uh, this uh, country, this nation, Israel, came about was the Rothschilds after the Second World War. They just, uh, it turned out that they had had this plan for a long, long time. And uh, so they, through what was called the Balfour uh, Agreement or, or document, they just said, well, we're just going to take this piece of land and we just take a ruler and a pen and just do, do, do. Here's Israel for you. So 
this uh, piece of land was given to the chosen ones, as they call themselves, uh, the, the Jewish people from different parts of the world who had allegedly gone through uh, death camps, horror camps, for sure concentration camps. That is absolutely uh, correct. There are some major question marks around the history behind it. I stand by that. You can go to my website. Oh, you, uh, mean, the, one. you mean the Holocaust? There's a massive, there are major, major, major questions around the logistics of that whole thing. That's true. But, I mean, I, I don't, I don't disagree with you. I, I think perhaps that might have, the numbers might have been ma majorly exaggerated. I'm sure those things do exist, but the numbers don't seem to add up in my opinion. So I, I definitely, um, I'm, I'm on your side there. If you go to my website, Light on Conspiracies, that's a segue, uh, and you check it out, uh, there's one called uh, Hola Hoax, uh, and it's an interview. That if you want to commit suicide uh, publicly, uh, I tell you, if you start criticizing the Holocaust, <laughs> that is the way to get absolutely shut down. That's true. Because, because it is illegal to even ask questions. The, the interview I did, I've only done one because yeah. uh, I stuck my head out once. It was very scary. I did two and a half hours. I went through the, all the steps, step by step by step, the logistics of that whole thing called the Holocaust. It makes absolutely zero sense. And the number six million has gone down. The official number is down to... I think 245,000 now, where most of them died from typhus. So the numbers are unbelievable. And I know now people, if people got upset before about me just putting question marks around the U.S. military, oh my God, I tell you now, people are turning around in their rocking chair going like, what is he on about? Oli's, I, Oli's lost his mind. He's joined Hamas now. No, no, not at all. I'm not into politics. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm joking trying. with you. I'm just, uh, I'm just saying so, that's how people view you now. Yeah. So anyway, so please go there. If you take the time to get upset, then please take the time to listen to that one. It's called Making Critical Thinking Illegal. Right. Making Critical Thinking Illegal. I have friends in jail in Germany because they've raised questions about this, uh, this whole event where you should think that... Uh, what is the problem asking questions? If right. the truth is the truth, yeah. if the official story is true, why are you fearing any kind of questions? And uh, anyway, so please listen to that. It's two hours. Uh, I tell you, I put in years and years and years, and it's not only me. It is There's a lot of people that have looked into this. And I'm not saying everybody who were in these camps are lying. Absolutely not. Many have also been taken for a ride in that whole thing, and, but also look into what is called Holocaust survivor, the money that is going that way. Are these people that were in these camps? Yeah, some of them, but so many others have been also included in this whole thing and are, are uh, being uh, financially uh, profiting from yeah. this whole thing. It's a, it's a very, very odd to say it is the ultimate ultimate historical big question mark i would say <clears throat> and um, so uh, and also there was this uh, she, i think she was a foreign minister of israel she was interviewed some years ago on democracy now and she said very openly like if anyone starts attacking us we just throw the at first the anti-semite uh, anti uh, thing at them if that doesn't stop them you know, because that stops most people, then we just go with the Holocaust and that will shut them down forever. Because as soon as you say anything, if, if they want, as soon as you're called a Holocaust denier, Ooh. then it's game over. It is, and yeah. I'm, I'm completely a history questioner, you know, so let's just watch i've been to many of these death camps uh, alleged death camps. i've been to many of these places historically because i try to find out what went down i'm not here to prove anything i'm just confused trying to find out what's going on what the hell is going on because our lives are being so uh, affected in many ways because of different things we're being told happened here is the problem, that was the reaction, and their solution was this. Many, many things in our lives, the situation we are in globally right now, is because there's been steps taken during history, and not always have we been told the truth. 
I would say very few times when, when, as far as I've been able to find out, because I've been having to unlearn on a massive scale over the years. It's been very, very discerning and, and very I, confusing for me to unlearn. I thought I knew history, you know, world history. I've been to many battlefields of the First and the Second World War. I've been on locations. I interviewed people. I've, all of these things. And then I started like, but what is going on? There's absolutely, this is just so weird. And then you will see that through history, history books, his story, as they say, history books has been always written by the ones that count, that were the winners. Right. It's always the winners that write the history books. Normally, if you're an objective journalist, you would go into a situation and see, okay, let's have a look at this one. I can see it from your point of view. I can see it from your point of view. This is but, true. But otherwise than that, certain things happened. There was a battle. So how many, for instance, were injured and dead on that side? How many were injured and dead on that side? You will see that the numbers in so many different places doesn't match up whatsoever. And that propaganda that was created uh, after the Second World War, I mean, the, the Bernard, uh, what's his name? Uh, it doesn't matter, but the the uh, my God, I, his name just that's slipped. okay. It happens. But anyway, the right. the, in, the inventor on what is called propaganda, right? Media, yeah. that took off after the Second World in a way that has, oh my God, has turned into psychological warfare. Absolutely, so, yeah. that's what we're seeing now um, with what's going on. Uh, Social media has done a great job of that. It's really intensified um, everything now. So, Michael, I would like yes, to sir. see. Okay, so we have, after the Second World War, we have a group of people that have been tormented in horrible ways. Uh, that is being said that, yeah, now we will give you the promised land. Here it is for you in the Middle East. So all of these people from around the world started traveling towards uh, Palestine and into the state that was created called Israel. So at least I think that, come on guys, if you've been going through absolute hell, then don't bring it, you know, don't, don't pay it forward. Learn from, from what you went through and, and treat other people in a different way than you officially were treated. So is that what happened? No, instead we see absolute atrocities more or less from day one. And one of the things that started this whole thing called terrorism, what on um, one of the ships that came with immigrants uh, towards Israel, a bomb exploded and that was blamed on the Palestinians. It has later turned out that it was actually an MI6 agent that had placed that bomb on that ship, blew it up, then blamed it on the Palestinians, and that was used then as a reason to start pushing them out. False flag operation. That is a classical false flag operation. Then a second one was, uh, I think it was at the Hotel Ben Gurion, if I remember right. It, there was a person dressed in Palestinian clothes that placed a bomb there and blew up a lot of Israeli people. Turn out later, it was not a Palestinian whatsoever. It was an Israeli, I think, directly related to Benjamin Netanyahu that had dressed up as a Palestinian, placed the bombs there and blew his own people up. The, that is the, not the correct uh, wording because they don't, they see themselves above. And so that ordinary people that get killed and blown, if it helps, to get the emotions up there, it's fine, not a problem whatsoever. So they will kill their own to get uh, into a more powerful situation themselves. Okay, so over the years, there's been different wars. There's been a lot of, you know, the whole story about poor Israel. Oh, yeah. Uh, this, this tiny little country in the Middle East. I agree in one way. They've been on their own down there, surrounded by neighboring countries that have been hostile to them entering into the area. All of them, uh, or most of them, Arab countries. But we have Jordan, we have Syria, we have uh, Libya, we have Egypt, we have the whole area, Iran, Iraq, the whole area, and then Israel in the middle. Very strategically positioned by the Sea, uh, the, uh, sea of the Mediterranean. 
the, the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, sorry about that, but in a very strategic position. Anyway, so every time there's been a conflict or so, the Israeli, the people in power, let's say it like that, have used it as an excuse to push the, the Palestinians out, out, out. So anything that has happened has been an excuse to push them out. And so many ended up in refugee camps in southern Lebanon. I've been there. Uh, they've been there for 40, 50, 60, 70 years. I mean, forever in these refugee camps, really like Indian reservations, horrible places. It's so hot. It's so dry. There's hardly any water. They were just pushed out there. Then every time something happens, push up, push up, push up. So in the end here, some years ago, you had the Gaza Strip, which is a tiny strip down in the southwest. It's like two and a half times, four and a half miles or something like that. It's tiny. And there's like two million people in there. Then you have the Golan Heights. You have the, the Western Bank. These were the areas where Palestinians, like Indian reservations, I tell you, were allowed to stay. But every single time, you know, just like with the Native American Indians, every treaty, every deal that was made was broken by in the U.S., by the U.S. government forces, whatever you want to call them. And here we had uh, what was done to the Palestinians, where that, uh, you know, okay, no, we're going to make new settlements. And so they just come in with bulldozers. They just bulldoze down the Palestinian people's homes just for no reason except that now they want new settlements here. And if any Palestinian was sort of protesting, saying, but please, please leave my home alone, my, please, my children are indoors or inside or whatever, they were just knocked down, arrested, shot at, uh, you name it. As soon as anybody started throwing a rock or anything, that was seen as a terrorist action. But so if you go back in the late 40s, there was, uh, um, this, with the help of the CIA, that was being reconstructed from the OSS into the CIA, yeah. with the help of Operation Paperclip, with people in the background. They were also the ones that, that created and started what's called Mossad, the Israeli Intelligence Agency. The Mossad's motto is uh, war by deception. War by deception. What does that tell you? It tells you they will play with your mind. That is the war they're carrying out. So what they tell you, if it's their operation, I tell you, what are the chances? If the motto is war by deception, then the chances is that the war, the outlet of the information will be the exact opposite of what actually happened. That is the way they work. And then you start seeing that they, I strongly suggest, are the ones that came up with a whole... Um, narrative of terrorism in the 70s they right. had meetings down in the middle east george bruce senior was down as well attend, attending these meetings where they came up with this scenario how are we going to do it how can we do this we have to have an enemy from the outside and then build on the cia's strategy of tension where they started with random acts of violence to to create chaos in many many countries western european countries especially uh, out of that, then that would justify more and more militarization of the police, more and more surveillance, more and more freedoms out the window, and which is exactly what we see has happened in the last 30, 40, 50 years in the world, that whole thing. So also the leaders that have been glorified uh, and through movies and so on, but when you look at where these people came from, they came from what is labeled terrorism. So without picking sides, then let's have a look at, okay, so the Israelis come in there. So is the Israel as a nation, is that a poor nation that was just dumped in the middle of a desert, you know, defending themselves with sticks and, and whatever against these violent, violent, uh, highly uh, military equipped nations around them? No, Israel has been funded from the U.S. with I think it's around $10 million per day, Right. per day, has been uh, sent from the U.S., a country, I mean, you know it, you have been having real problems financially. 
Why is all of this money being sent to this country in the Middle East? Why is that? Ten million dollars. Do you know how many people, how many homeless people, how many That's right, yeah. war veterans, how many could, could be saved yeah. by that money? Instead, it's sent without anybody being really asked about it. Oh, is that okay with you, dear Mr. Citizen uh, of the U.S.? Are you okay with that? No, it's just being... Out, pumped up, pumped up, pumped up, and ten million per day. That adds up to a lot of money isn't over that, the years. Isn't that wild that our government does that? Uh, with, you know, it, it, a lot of uh, politicians out there. You know, they're claiming to be America first, but they all still bow down to Israel. I always thought that was quite um quite hysterical. You know, even Donald Trump, the same same way. He also bent the knee to Israel. You have to ask yourself, does that make any logic whatsoever? Not it does at all, not. no. When, I think when uh, Obama was in power, I mean, he was uh, the most popular president for a long time before Trump and so on. But right. I think he had 15, stand, 15 standing ovations at the most. When Benjamin, I'm almost sure that these numbers are correct. Uh, maybe I've, uh, something like that. When Benjamin Netanyahu came, he had 25 standing ovations. 25. What? So if the Swedish foreign minister would come to, or, or president or prime minister, or any other prime minister would come to, to the U.S., have they even gotten one standing ovation? Probably I don't not. Think so. Yeah, probably I not. I don't think so. <laughs> and so what does that tell you? It tells you war by deception we, they, we're, there's something going on here that makes no sense we're being played somehow i don't know how but there's something going on that is not logical can no. we agree on that I, you, absolutely and you know all okay. of, all, all of what's been going on really is reminiscent of 9-11 i know it's not the first time you heard this but it definitely feels like a post the 9-11 era currently here in america and i i still quite vividly remember what was going on during that time and even being vocal about the war, about Bush, about what happened, you were automatically um, just canceled out in a way. Uh, people, they wanted to get rid of you. I mean, look what happened to the Dixie Chicks for talking about Bush. Do you know Voltaire, many, many, several hundred years ago, he said to find out who controls you, find out who you're not allowed to criticize. Exactly. Um, you're told that you live in a democracy, mm -hmm. so why are you not allowed just to say, listen, I don't like this, I'm confused, can you please tell me what's going on here? No, as soon as you ask questions, you will be demonized, right. you will be called a, a, a traitor, these weaponized yeah. words, yeah. traitor, or uh, conspiracy, right. tinfoil hat, it, just by asking questions. That is the job of a, of a hardcore journalist, is to ask questions. But here, if you do it, then it suddenly turned completely yeah. around against you. You're ridiculed. What does that tell you? It, it just, There's it, something differently different uh, going on than we are officially being told. So let's get back to Israel here. So, back to Israel here, yes. Yeah. So for many years, ten million dollar per day. I don't know for how many years this has been going on, but like we're talking uh, funding in the billions. Billions, billions, and billions have been pumped into this tiny little country. A lot of it, do you see it in the in the country as such? Is that the most uh, rich country ever? No. But look at the military. Look at the surveillance. Look at the 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 fighter jets, the the tanks. The I mean, it is the most high tech ever, ever. And Mossad highly paid and. So, and also uh, the whole population is, is uh, called into the military. They have to do, I think it's three years military duty. So they are on guard, you know, so, and there's a lot of guns among the civilians as well. When I was there, I mean, there were people with machine guns, right, left and center, right. just on trams or or buses or whatever. You just, uh, I'm not sure if the trams are, maybe I forgot, but uh, on buses, on you name it, uh, you just saw ordinary people with a machine gun over their shoulder. So was this sort of in a threatened area? When you looked at how, I tell you, I never experienced apartheid like uh, I was told that uh, I've been to South Africa, but not during the time of, of apartheid. But what I saw there, it shook me to the bone, I tell you, because on a soft level, 
the the economic situation where like the Palestinians jobs were paid like half or two thirds or half or something like that. They had to have uh, uh, identification papers on them at on all at all times so that they could be identified. The 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 cars were had special plates so that everybody could see there's a Palestinian there, there's a Palestinian there. They weren't allowed to date, uh, you know, like a Jewish girl, right? Or a Palestinian. Right. So sometimes people were found shot dead and they were just in a, ended up in a ditch somewhere, just like uh, in Northern Ireland, you know, with a with that whole conflict over there, and. And so also the way the living standards were incredibly different among the Palestinians and among the Israelis. No wonder that there is animosity growing if people are being pushed into refugee camps with hardly any water. They're not allowed to earn their money. They're not allowed to travel where they want. They're not. They do you know. No wonder. No wonder. So. What, is, uh, what happened then is that they kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing like this. And also we have this problem with Jerusalem being a holy city for different religions. The exact square kilometer is the center for Christianity, but also for Islam. And, and you know, stuff like, and Jewish. It's like, oh my God, you got the wall, you got the mosque, you got Bethlehem, you got Jerusalem. Oh, the whole thing is not an easy situation is a perfect powder keg to have problems in that's right so so anyway so we have then what i also saw was uh, i saw it with my own eyes some of the most horrific things i've ever uh, seen would you see where the where the idf the israeli soldiers that have been i mean these are just normal kids that are pumped you know pushed into uh a, a uniform and then through their whole life they've been pumped with this uh, propaganda palestinians terrorists terrorists palestinians terror you know but many i uh, many many of the things that has happened in israel i tell you i've debunked them i've been on location as just trying to find out what they actually were and it turned out that they were inside jobs once again to create this uh, this illusion of them being attacked when they're exactly the exact opposite. Ah. So that's not a surprise. I'm not, I'm, I'm not pointing at the at the population because they're being duped, completely duped. These they are also the victims of this power game behind the scenes. So okay, so then in uh, we had uh, for many years there was an organization called PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization with a man called Yasir Arafat, which if I understand it right, when I've, I mean, I studied him, he looked like a man that was just trying to say, please, please, let's just find a way to coexist. Let's see if we can become good neighbors somehow and agree on living in peace. He was not a violent man at all. And then uh, in this whole thing, it ended up with him dead. He was poisoned to death, if I'm wow. correct. And then in the aftermath of that, something called Hamas was created. <clears throat> Hamas was a political organization that was officially there to fight for the rights of the Palestinians. But this was created. This is not a, a secret anymore. It was created and funded by the Israeli government. Yes, this is what so, I read, that um, Hamas was actually created by um, Israel. <laughs> And there you go. How many wars have we seen when both sides are controlled by the same force? Yeah, we and do that. Big, all, yeah, we do that all the time here in America. We all always uh, the we, time. we supply all a lot of our enemies. It's there's nothing new. I'm talking oh, about yeah. hundreds of cases. Crazy. And you will see, you will see in the background the same financial structures. They're funding both sides to keep the conflict going because they they make an absolute literally killing of wars that's right and then they afterwards they reconstruct the, co the countries making an absolute additional billion in the reconstruction where the money never comes to the population but they get funneled into uh, their own uh, you know hierarchy and also into bridges and ports and stuff like that where the population is often left almost starving but the the funds are going into that now, i mean we're talking about companies like halliburton and these type of companies that are forefront when it comes to that thing anyway so so hamas was an israeli creation can you believe it 
and then that was sent into uh, the Palestinian population saying we're here for you but actually they were working for Israel so any conflict between Israel and Hamas you have to ask yourself well if Hamas was created and funded by Israel and they start firing things at Israel could that be maybe a design provocation could it be that that was made to start conflicts I would say the possibility yeah very probable yeah. absolutely I mean, if they're funded by Israel, why would Israel fund the enemy? They wouldn't. So anyway, so because of these uh, uh, violent actions, uh, poom, poof, poof, and rockets and stuff like that, uh, we had the creation of the Gaza Strip, which is a fenced-in area. This is the world's biggest open-air prison. That, if you've ever seen a concentration camp, that's it. That is it. You got like, it's a little more than 2 million people that are living in that tiny little area. And if I think 75% is younger than 15, maybe it's, I can, I haven't been counting them myself. These are numbers I'm being given. Many, let's put it down to 50, but 50% uh, are kids and teenagers because so many have been killed and tortured and to death and stuff like that over the years so a large population of of uh, the gaza strip are children okay and so also in this area they built walls that goes above uh, ground and also underground down there fenced the uh, fenced the uh, barbed wire fence the whole area is uh, fenced off you got highly sensitive sensors you got machine guns ai controlled nowadays you got the top of the line of surveillance uh, system. Even if a rat got close to, to the fence, the whole thing got activated. You have tanks, you got attack helicopters, you got fighter jets, you got uh, army, you got a, uh, um, and, uh, an armed population, you got the whole thing. And then you have two million, a little more than two million people, most of them children, that have been locked in for so many years where they've been completely shut off when, many times when it comes to water, electricity, uh, any kinds of, you know, like uh, bulldozers or building material have been stopped. So you cannot bring it in. Explosives, I don't think so. N none of these things. A friend of mine, uh, Max Egan, he managed to get into the Gaza Strip uh, many years ago. And one of the reasons he went in there was to try and help the children. And so he's a carpenter and he wanted to, when, while he was in there, he wanted to help to you know, build some benches, benches and stuff for the local school. But there were no screws, there were no nails, there were no hammers and so on. Because that's the way when, when you're locked in. And there were uh, super, super um, uh, controlled in, exits uh, in and out, you know, with uh, cameras and soldiers and barbed wire and also the the whole motto if you listen to soldiers that IDF soldiers that were working was to terrorize the population to just keep them constantly uh, on the edge on, on, in fear their house could be raided they could be they just took kids randomly uh, I mean the worst the absolute worst I mean you can I think you can still find it on YouTube it really it's hard for me even to talk about they were given orders to break arms and legs of teenagers, of anyone they took, not because they'd done anything, but just they were taken. And then they just took big rocks. They held the hands, the arms uh, put them between two rocks and took a third rock and just uh, kept uh, hitting until the arms and legs broke. Wow. They got stoned to, to death, basically. To, to limp, make them limp, make them, you know. Paralyze them. In a way, I mean things like that. Yeah, the the only word for things like that is pure evil. And then you have the soldiers of the IDF who've been pumped with this whole uh, Palestinians are terrorists, Palestinians are terrorists. So they have been terrified to start with, and then they get more and more desensitized, uh, just like soldiers do. That's also why they they get into the army very young because they then they're 
their brain hasn't fully uh, evolved yet and they are very more easily um, controlled and, and giving orders to do horrific stuff. So we're getting close now to what then happened here recently. So first you had the whole thing in Maui where millions of people were starting to become aware of like what on earth was going on in Maui. That is not the official story. It makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. The anomaly, anomalies around the fires, the, dis, the way that the, the cars have been absolutely destroyed. This is not from normal fires, and we have many scientists now that are talking about directed energy weapons, which is nothing new. You go to Lockheed Martin's website, you go to to Raytheon's website, you go to Northroom Grover's website, you will see that they're, they're bragging about uh, these Tesla-based weapons since that have been developed for the last 50, 60 years. It's on their website. Look at it. Look at what they can do. What the the effects of these weapons, how they are carried out and stuff like that, you will see that's exactly what we see. We saw the same thing in the uh, Paradise Fires in California. We saw the same anomalies around 9-11 where there was 1,600 cars that just popped in bizarre ways. You had, uh, there's been over the years, there's been like testing of these weapons. Like there was a parking garage in Liverpool in 2017, I think, 16 or 17, where I think 1,200 cars were fried. The concrete, everything was just fried, completely different to a normal explosion or fire, completely the opposite. Anyway, so we go to Gaza for, because suddenly the attention is in Maui, where the if you ask me, the whole agenda is to turn uh, Maui into the world's first smart island uh, controlled by AI. That's uh -huh. the whole thing, where there's a, a land grab and mass murder going on there yeah. to eliminate all kinds of resistance and did, push did you them see, out. Did, did you see how fast the, the media turned on, on that whole story once people start asking questions about what happened in Lahaina? And that's when you need a distraction. That's right. And you, you did see melted glass and melted tires and rims. And that was a dead giveaway that uh, directed energy weapons were, in fact, used in Hawaii. It is being used in many different ways. The ones carrying it out, if I'm correct, is the U.S. Space Force. That they were the ones that carried it out. In I Maui. hope not. But you might be right about that. I tell you. I stand by that. You can almost chop my right arm off if I'm if I'm not correct. I've been we, looking very deeply into this whole thing. We do have that, a space force for a reason, so yes. What does that mean? Oh, exactly what, what it sounds like. What does that even mean? Is there a threat out in space, or are, we what are is the being threat? Used to, yeah. But go, please go to my website. I know I say uh, outrageous things, so please go to my website. Uh, I, I have uh, like uh, maybe 10, 15 interviews in great detail about what went down in Lahaina that day. Right. That's so, laid on, that's laid on conspiracies com for anybody who wants to check that out. I recommend going there um, whenever you have free time and look up, uh, if you want to look into this further, definitely go check out Oli's website. That's light on conspiracies com. And maybe you shouldn't wait until you get free time. It's your future that is right. on the line as well, because if you haven't noticed, there's a hell of a lot. Are literally going on in the world right now Oof. so we need to turn this whole thing around so maybe not wait until the day that you can kick back and right and to have a pizza and just uh, <laughs> maybe it's your future your kids future that depends on you maybe get your sweet butt out of the sofa That's and right. stand up for what is true so anyway well, let's get well, go back to gaza so going back have, to gaza yes it's like uh, we've recently had like uh, tyson fury and Francis uh, Nuganu. Nuganu. Yeah. Okay, so these are the heavyweight fighters of the world. Okay. And Saudi so, Arabia. Yeah. Okay. So on one side, if you look at this war, we have in Israel on the Israeli side, like Tyson Fury here, Israel comes in, and let's look at his powers. Oh, it's only one of the most advanced armies, uh, funded by billions of dollars coming from the West and other places into that tiny little country. Fighter jets, jets we have uh, attack helicopters, uh, Apache helicopters that with incredible firepower that can take out multiple 
uh, objects at the same time. We got uh, tanks, very highly uh, uh, advanced tanks. We got surveillance systems that are out of this world. Right. We had the best guarded wall in the, on the planet. If it's flat around, I don't know any other place that is as highly secured and securely secured than the Gaza Strip. On um, we have uh, an, a very very uh, advanced uh, intelligence operation uh, based on the Mossad uh, uh, structure, and we have an armed population where they're being handed out machine guns and all of these types of things. That's on one side. Tyson Fury. Israel, here you come. Okay, so on the other side, have we got Mike Tyson or some other incredible heavyweight? We have a population that has been locked in for many, 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 many years, half of them consisting of teenagers and children we, that have been under bombardment on a regular basis where fighter jets have been coming in, bombing, 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 into this area where there's no nails and screws, where there's hardly any food, where there's hardly any water, where everything is controlled and blocked. Well, Iran has funded them. How? How did they even get the funds in there? Do you think that Swish or, or that you can make a bank transfer into that area? Not at all. Uh, yeah, but the tunnels. Yeah, the tunnels are also controlled. I mean, do you think they're stupid? Uh, Israel is stupid. They're not looking for holes in the <laughs> right. ground. It's like, and then you yes. have these film things with Hamas uh, running around. They go into a hole in the ground, big hole, and then they go down and they're running around with their ski masks and put explosives in there. I mean, really, do you think, uh, don't you think that the Israelis would be a little more aware of holes around that tiny little area? where the wall even goes out into the sea. So it goes way, way down. Okay, so anyway, so we got that. Half of the population children, are they interested in politics? Are they completely terrorized and, and uh, worn out by war and uh, everything else? Yes, they are. I spoke to Max, I've spoken to other people. I've been in contact with people in the Gaza Strip myself. I've been there. They're beautiful people, beautiful, beautiful. I don't, I don't understand how people can be so kind in during these uh, circumstances. But that's human spirit for you. It's incredible what humans can take, you know. So, so this is the. So, are we talking about two heavyweight fighters now in the ring? No, we're talking about Mike Tyson in a daycare center with newly born. That's the power difference, the, the difference in strength. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay, so let's see what happened here. On the date of the Yom Kippur War, they love uh, these uh, repetitions of uh, anniversaries or dates, many times from satanic points of view. On that day, we suddenly had that the a major part of the guarded forces that were there were de-armed. They, they were told to give in their arms, their weapons. Okay, who could tell them that was the Palestinians that said, put down your weapons, we are about to get out. I don't think so. It came orders from up. <laughs> I want to, uh, I just want to uh, let you in. You know, there's one man that I really, really admired. His name was Fletcher Prouty. He was in the Pentagon. He was in Black Ops. Uh, he was uh, in the uh, very, very high up in these type of operations. He is the guy that is uh, named Mr. X in the JFK movie. He was a whistleblower after the JFK assassination where he saw that, oh my God, what have we done? What have we done? So I have learned so much from him because he was on the inside. And he said that one of the, the, one of the dead giveaways of when it's their operation is not what actually happened, but what did not happen that would normally occur. That is the thing you have to look for. What did not happen the way it should have happened? Okay, so let's just listen to him, an insider, top, top, top of the line, and see if there's anything that doesn't make any sense here. So one of the ones I would say is, why were, they, why were the weapons taken away from these guards? Has never, ever happened before. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Okay, so without 
Mossad knowing it, without the Israeli forces knowing it, Hamas had been planning a, an outbreak in 15 different locations at the same time. That takes some planning for you. Okay, so how did they get out? Well, it just happened that for seven hours, all of the guards were in the Western Bank. They were not there. It's just like Jeffrey Epstein's uh, jail wards and jail guards, you know, that no. went to sleep and suddenly, oh my God, not only did they go to sleep, but they turn off the cameras yeah, the as cameras. well that are non, that should be on 24 seven. What a bummer. Well, How put convenient. the cameras back on. Sorry, he just hung himself. Oof, I yeah. mean, on the level of please activate your brain, when do you start seeing that that doesn't make any sense? It is. And, it's, it's crazy that the, the U.S. government and basically the, everyone in the world, they wanted to fool everyone into thinking that that this was just an accident. It's just ridiculous, Oli, what they want you to believe. We had the Pentagon that was uh, hit by a plane, they say. Right. Okay. So the Pentagon, is that some warehouse in the middle of nowhere up in Idaho where nobody cares about that? Yeah. Where there are no cameras? Or <laughs> is it the most highly secured building on the planet do you think do you think that there might have been one cctv camera there i just ask you michael what do you think do you think before 9 11 that they had at least one camera on the outside what I'm do you think i'm sure they had more than one i would say probably in the thousands they have so, a, it's, it's 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 more um protected than the iron dome of around israel i bet and so what happened on 9 11 well, there was no one of them. None of them worked that day. No. They, they fell asleep, that's why. They fell asleep, they but fell the asleep. FBI came and confiscated all the film. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we, what we are left with is one image from a gas station down the, down the, down road, the road that shows some kind of thing that doesn't have the same properties or, or uh, proportions as an airplane that is said to have hit the wall, and boom, we see the one camera out of thousands. Does doesn't anyone think like, wait a second, I want to see the rest of the 2,400 cameras. What did they see? No, sorry. It will be, uh, you know, like maybe in 140 years or 70 years. They always like 70 years because then everybody involved will be six foot, feet under. Right. But anyway, when Diana died, 14 CCTV cameras uh, on the way to the tunnel, all of them stopped working. Mm. Oh, it's standard procedure. And here... So here we have that suddenly this, the most secure wall are in the world, all of the Israeli guards left for seven, I kid you not, this is from the Israeli authorities, they have reported seven hours. Do you know how long seven hours is? I will start that's, counting. That's very long. And start. Can you wake me up after lunch and dinner? And uh, then I will tell you when seven hours has passed. It <laughs> is incredibly long. 420 so, minutes, exactly. Thank you so much. Could you please uh, take that in seconds as well? How many seconds? Because in, you can, with a machine gun, kill people in seconds. So how many seconds would that take? So 25,200 seconds. Please repeat. I said 25,200 seconds. Okay, that is amazing. Thank you so much. So in every do -do 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 -do, or a fast gun, you have a lot of death oh, that yeah. could be caused within minutes. So what are the chances from a logical point of view that this has never happened? And at the exact same time as Hamas managed to break out in 15 different locations, then all the guards are gone. They're gone. It's, it's like incredibly lucky yeah you hamas, say, they, on hamas hamas so, used uh, motor powered hang gliders for those who have been falling asleep uh, okay, during the so, during the thing i mean it's ridiculous that they used motorized power hang gliders um holy just just to okay, um, so, get over so, <laughs> okay so we have idf guards that have been working at the gaza strip that have stepped forward and saying my god this is absolutely ridiculous is this monty python or what Come on, wake the hell up. They said that even if a rat or a cat got close to the fence, they got it, the whole system got uh, activated, alerted. There were soldiers there, there were jeeps with mounted machine guns, there were Apache helicopters, there were fighter jets on standby. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. Yeah. 
deactivated, right? Mm -hmm. That time, oh my God, the, the amount of bad luck that day. And so you look at it, we see, okay, hang gliders. Because I first I thought, well, you need to be up on a high building or some kind of hill to even get going. But they said, no, motorized. So from a place where no nails and no screws, maybe they took an office fan, you know, that they had uh, and put uh, under their butt so that they could get this hang glider, glider going. So do you know the speed of a hang glider? It would be like, like mosquito type of speed. Right. They got over... Also, they broke through the wall. We have seen these bulldozers that are just uh, breaking through the fence. That is amazing, especially since bulldozers are not allowed on the inside. Right. Who took who took the photos of this? Was that from the inside of the Palestinian side? That was sort of, uh, yeah, we've been planning this, and now we make the surprise attack. No, the photos were taken from the Israeli side. So maybe there were some phot photographers standing there waiting for them. Most of them masked also. You know about the shoes that always appear when these the Nike trainers. Uh, let's get back to that another time. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> you you, you remind me of the the dancing Israelis again. By the way, when you said that. Yeah, but uh, anyway, so an Apache helicopter had anything like this happen, they broke out. It's incredible in pickup trucks and hang gliders. So an an Apache one Apache helicopter could come in. And in 42 seconds, eliminate all pickups, all hand gliders, all whatever. Pretty, do, 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 pretty do, 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 do. easy. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Game over. No. Instead, for seven hours. They stood down. We're, we're, we're told, we see these pickups, they go up on the highway. By the way, the highway is completely empty. There's no traffic. It's almost like somebody has opened the door. Or, or is it even real? Are we seeing... The real thing because it's been filmed out in the desert so god knows what where that is it could be it could be filmed in jordan it could be filmed in arizona it's not the first time we've seen these type of things where isis has been filmed in arizona and then it's told that it was down in syria so anyway <clears throat> they break out and they go on this killing spree and they kill about 1,000 israelis okay so all the guards, all the helicopters, everybody seemed to be on stand down, or maybe they ran out of fuel, maybe, I don't know, but none was activated for seven hours. Strange. While, the, while Hamas, funded by the Israelis, were running around on the inside of Israel, officially kidnapping many soldiers. So we have soldiers that are the victims under the control of Israel, we had, they were in Israel under the control of Israel and Hamas funded by Israel. So is that, had the Palestinian any say in this? I wonder. Anyway, so we, we're being told a thousand people were killed. They did, uh, they blew up cars uh, outside a hospital, <coughs> outside a, a music festival. Uh, where else? Uh, also by near the border, there was a kibbutz there. All of these places, they said, oh, a thousand people were murdered. And then they, they kidnapped these and brought them back. They managed to bring them back into Gaza again. Why on earth would they go back in? But anyway, they went back in behind the wall and with n not even being confronted there. Yeah, it's pretty fishy, you know. Um, when you think about it that way, and I, I wish many other people would think that way it's kind of the obvious you would have to say well how did they even get let in how did they how were they managed how did they even uh, bypass all the security if someone didn't let them in themselves michael this is uh, it's not just questionable it is if my monty python did this it would be ridiculous it i would agree be, if anybody came with a film script saying okay i have this great idea this is what it's all about. Do you, would you get a funding for this whole thing? Because everybody would say, like, what do you mean? No soldiers for seven years, seven hours. That, that's ridiculous. Yeah. No, that's not realistic. Please make it more like lifelike. You go back home, rewrite the whole script, come back. And so we have something to go for. This is on a level that you, you I, I don't know what to say, but where on what level can you not see that this cannot happen in a natural way exactly it can it cannot 
it cannot it cannot so what what does that mean so we have we have uh, the blown up cars okay so these cars have they the signs of uh, cars being destroyed by explosives are there craters near the cars are there anything near an epicenter so, so you know the signs of an epicenter are the cars torn apart from explosives and turn on fire because of that absolutely not have they got melted car, melted glass melted rims melted all of these things that we've seen exactly is that have they had in such incredible temperatures going on but at the same time, the asphalt is not even bubbled. With the, the grass is green right next to the vehicles. The trees are not burned. What's going on? We're told we're back to directed energy weapons. It's exactly the same uh, this destruction and damages here. So how on earth would, would PLO or, pa if you're, or pa the Palestinian people have access to anything remotely close to directed energy weapons. They do not. This is highly, highly advanced weapon technology. So who has got their hands in that type of area? Well, you got Israel and with the US in the background, because what is going on? I'm, I'm not pointing at the US as a country. I'm talking about the attempt of a, of a world domination, a global overtake, where the forces that are trying to do that, which is a small little but very powerful group, have access to uh, units like the US, Air Force, the US Space Force that are just following orders. This is the thing. These are just being used again and again. And by the way, right when this happened, you had uh, at the Luton Airport in, in uh, London, another 1,500 cars just absolutely destroyed with the same weapon technology why you are i don't know you have down in in argentina many times these are, are like nato countries or countries close to connected to nato that are in the receiving end of these operations because uh, of the agenda we have about a thousand cars down there also in madosa that was completely fried there and then you had in the u.s right after this whole thing on the bridge I-55 outside New Orleans, mm. there was this suddenly there was this super fog that appeared out of nowhere. All of these cars crashed into each other. A lot of them burned, and people got killed. There. Look at the damages to the the vehicles. We're looking at the exact same thing. These are not the signs. Ask any any expert when it comes to fires or from fire brigade or ask any firefighter that's seen a car burn. Is this what it looks like? They will tell you, no, never seen anything like it. No, because this is not it. It's something different. So I would strongly suggest what we are in the receiving end of right now is unfortunately directed energy weapons coming from above where it seems like they're hitting coastal cities uh, of high real estate value, but also... <clears throat> Uh, critical points when it comes to communication, like airports, uh, bridges, uh, these type of centers, train stations. Unfortunately, I think we will see this coming up. Airports, hopefully not, but this is what I think they're uh, they're in the process of scaring people away from being mobile, from pushing them into the grid of the smart cities. That is what they're really trying to push forward. Uh, in the background of all of this. I believe you're correct on that. And by the way, FEMA only gave um, the Hawaiian survivors about $700 per household, by the way. No, FEMA was on location, and it was Joe Biden who gave $700 yeah, per 700. household. And mm -hmm. at the same time, when he finally got his butt over there, he said, we're really looking forward to see FEMA finish the job. Right. Finish the job. That is it. Finish the job. These are, we're not talking about government, we're talking about these power structure, global power structure, the new world order, small little uh, power elite that are ruthlessly trying to take over. And unfortunately, I live in an area, I live in Bali that is very similar to Maui, super similar, that has also a whole setup for becoming a smart city here in Denpasar, uh, with the same also uh, setup very similar 
to Maui and other places. The exercise, they're always an exercise before they go live and go real, you know, when, when these type of attacks. The exercise that was aimed at, uh, uh, at Maui was called Exercise Talisman Saber 23. Exercise Talisman, Talisman Saber 23. Uh, and <clears throat> in that there were 13 nations Normally in these exercises, you've got like nations like European countries or Australia, New Zealand. Here, it was mo most of them were were uh, like small nation or nations with uh, like paradise islands. You got like uh, we had Indonesia. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, we had the Philippines. We had Tonga, Fiji. We had uh, Thailand. We had Singapore. We had New Zealand, we had Japan. Japan has also these type of islands in the south. Uh, what, what else? Uh, we had the UK and we had France. France has many Polynesian islands as well. So something really sinister is uh, on its way. And here, unfortunately, now in, in Indonesia, we have, I think it's 32 landfill fires at the same time. 32. Normally, there are no fires at all at the same they, time at the same time Whoa. and then the fires are the fire is so deep 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 if you have a natural fire it starts on the surface maybe you know there's some glass in the sun and paper and it ignites boom not a big deal because you you can burn a lot of uh, rubbish anyway but here it's way, way down, 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 down under the surface where this, uh, these fires are. So very hard to, to turn out, just like in 9-11, very deep down. And the heat, is just, it just goes on and on and on. And then what is happening also is in many places, they're, they're emptying the water reserves for drinking water to turn out the fires. You know, and also the rice fields. This is in many South East Asian countries. The rice fields are very dependent on water. And now we've had drought for a long, long time. I think with a lot of chemtrailing going on, even the, the Indonesian government and governments in other countries have said, oh, we're so happy with cloud seeding and we we managed to stop the, the, the rains over there and we can put it over there and stuff like that. So it's not a secret. It's out there. Oh, it's very much out there. And the first time um, our country, um, well, it's not the first time, but our country was really using it back in Vietnam as well. Oh, it was, it was on before. It was yeah, way, I'm sure it was used but, before that too. But in, in Vietnam, Vietnam was the te the playground for these... Uh, for a lot of things, yeah. For Dietrich and horror stuff, you know, with bioweapons and all kinds of... Many times you will see weaponry being tested out uh, in like the Iraq war and stuff like that, where if you speak to the population of Iraq, they, they said absolute bizarre things were going on, you know, where, where people were being hit with some kind of weaponry and their bodies just shrunk to like a meter size instead of like to half the size. And uh, I mean, what God knows what uh, they had. Yeah, there's a lot of things awesome. going on. A lot of things were happening. And by the way, a lot of things are going on in Indonesia. I mean, the last time yeah. I checked, there was like an earthquake out there and uh, there was arrest being made over a plot to uh, disrupt the presidential election out there. So, um, yeah, lots going on in Indonesia. I had no idea. Lots going on in the world. Oh. I mean, earthqu earthquakes are natural. Earthquakes can also be created with hard technology. Right. So it's like, and also hurricanes. And uh, so you... You see this uh, like in Acapulco now, I started mm -hmm. to sound like a tinfoil hat, but I tell you, <laughs> I wish I was. In Acapulco, uh, we had this, which is a coastal time, town also, mm -hmm. or city with, uh, I was a speaker there once. I mean, beautiful place. Beautiful there, yeah. S there is the same type of setup if you look at the real estate value and so on, and also planned as a smart city, once again, a smart Ooh. city. So here, this... this hmm. uh, hurricane came from nowhere from nowhere uh, i mean i don't think it, anyone in the world has ever seen a faster uh growing t what is the t5 or whatever it was called from nothing to full on full on and then just staying over target staying over target staying over target and then just disappearing and then <clears throat> the government who is also under agenda 21 
the New World Order, stopping journalists from getting in there, stopping drone footage, stopping all of these things, stopping help being sent in there, just in, like they did in Maui, just like they've done in many other areas. What does that tell you? Why would they do that if it's not because the agenda is different to what we're being told? Why don't they want things to be filmed? Because they've got something to cover. Got because something to they've hide, got yeah. something to hide. Yeah. So back to dear old Gaza. Dear if you Gaza. ask me, from, uh, I mean, I'm considered one of the top in the world from when it comes to these type of operations after, it's not my own words, it's other people on both sides saying that. Right. So what do I see? I see that this was a f complete 100% setup from the powers behind Israel. 100% Benjamin Netanyahu and his boys, who are just thugs in this uh, in this group, are the ones in charge. Oh, of they had it planned. I mean, everybody wanted him out oh, of there. They wanted yeah, his but, ass gone. And then look what happened, you know. So all of this was was definitely orchestrated. I mean, they rolled out the plan to basic. I mean, this is the only way I could describe what's going on: a pure uh, genocide of a uh, Palestine, in my opinion, is what's currently going on. Yep, and we're playing with our belly button, saying, oh, "I don't think so." I think. I mean, we should be ashamed of ourselves. This should not be allowed to happen, but it is. It is. Yeah. So anyway, you had uh, dear Mister uh, BB, as he called himself, right. Uh, in front of the United Nations, just uh, not just a few weeks before this whole went down, whole thing went down, with maps of the new Middle East and also the greater Israel. And on that, there is no Palestine anymore. It's just not there. So he showed maps before, before this headed and then afterwards. And I want to say also, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., what happened? Come on, what the hell? He has been doing a lot of good uh, standing up against Fauci and so on. Right. But just weeks before this whole thing happened, what happened? He was on stage, on a Jewish stage, where he was speaking so highly about the IDF as, you know, the soldiers of Israel as right. the most uh, humane, the most mm. uh, fantastic uh, soldiers, the, the most uh, only doing anything with military targets, either he's been duped as no one I've ever seen, or he is part of justifying what was going to go, going to happen because, and then right away also he backed up the whole thing and said, we have to stand up by our friend Israel here who are under, who's under this incredible attack from someone with a, not even nails or, or screws for the school benches. But apparently they have all of this firepower that is being pumped out and you see footage from in the middle of the night you can see flashes going like boom and there's an explosion right. and that's that's the evidence of, of what it's the evidence of nothing where is that even filmed when the last few wars that have been there a lot of the footage had been used from computer games or from conflicts that have been uh, happening earlier like the ukraine the whole setup in, in ukraine like uh some of the footage was from Arma 3, the, the, a computer game. They've even sued CNN for using footage from or, or images from their computer game. Outrageous. They also had uh, some, they were showing, oh, look here in Kiev, there's all of this massive uh, firefighting going on. No, it was from a show, a, uh, a, uh, what do you call it, an arms uh, exhibition in, I think it was in Houston, somewhere in Texas anyway. Why, why? Where are they using these type of images? Also from the Ukraine conflict, they had images from 2014 and said, this is happening right now. We're taking for a ride here. There's something going on that we don't understand. You have to ask yourself, why is somebody trying to mess with my mind and for what reason? So let's go back to this whole thing <clears throat> with... Uh, you had this uh, music concert that uh, we said that Hamas running around there for seven hours, completely not being, uh, you know, targeted or that nothing was defended. So we see this slaughter place of where all of these people got killed. When you look at it from a forensic point of view, the only thing you see is a lot of sleeping bags, towels, there's some garbage, there's some water bottles, nothing else. That's it. And they say, this is the proof that it happened. No, I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm saying this is the proof 
that there are sleeping bags, towels, and a lot of garbage in one place of Mother Earth. That's the only proof it is. What actually had to prove it, you had to and it give more than that. Then you have the people, when you look at many, many of these events that have happened for many years here now, we have false flag operation where the attacked one is actually the attacker. The attacked one is actually the attacker so that the victim, the victim gets justified in doing, and most of the time we see invasion, rape and plunder. That is a standard false flag operation. So here we're being told that Hamas is being let loose here. They run around and they kill about a thousand people without even anyone firing back at them. It's now turned out that a lot of the people killed, when you listen to the testimonies, they say, well, actually, the ones shooting at us was the Israeli army. And uh, also Hamas, of course, you know that it's Hamas because they've got ski masks on, so you can you have no idea who these individuals are. And by the way, where's ISIS? ISIS just disappeared uh, from the Middle East. Then suddenly you had a lot of atrocities carried out in Ukraine by people in Ukrainian uniform. I am from the inside. That a lot of the so-called ISIS, which is their own creation, was relocated from the Middle East to the Ukraine to carry out atrocity there in wearing different type of uniforms, but doing whatever they were needed there. And now, where are they now? ISIS has just gone to sleep, just like under COVID and Corona, where they, where were they? No, they didn't dare to go outdoors either because of the this horrible virus, maybe. But anyway, so here, I would suggest they could very well possibly be the ones running around doing crazy shit in Israel, completely part of the operation. So you see interviews by victims. Please, 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 if you've seen or interviewed real victims of horrible incidents. I've, I used to work as a journalist. I've interviewed people right after car accidents or murders and so on. They are, <clears throat> I mean, either in absolute shock where they don't speak, they're just completely pale and need to lie down. They're like that cold, sweaty, uh, light green in the face. Right, yeah. Or, or they're absolutely hysterical or they're extremely emotional. You know, here we see no emotion whatsoever none and look at them when they're being filmed look very often their eyes goes down and to the left that's where the prompter is so that's where the script is you look down and to the left and then they say things like yes and then they cut our open the the, uh, the belly of this pregnant mother and they took wait a second and i just need to check the prompter they they took out they tore out the baby and then they they cut off her head and then they, you know, no emotion whatsoever. Look at their eyes. They go straight down to the, very often in these operations, behind them and to the right, you have an anonymous person just standing there like a relative or whatever. They're the handler. They're the ones making sure that everything is being done the way it should be done, if I'm correct. So if you look at when all of this happened, was media globally sort of balanced with in certain areas you said, uh, well, based on the history, maybe Israel should have acted like this, or maybe some countries or some newspapers would have said, well, well, we actually, when, when you look at it, we are sort of backing Palestinian. No. Is that what you see? No, you see a 100% backing of the official narrative. That is Agenda 21. And also, that is how the control of global media now is con concentrated to so few, so, so few of these big publishing houses and companies like that. So, so few. It, we saw it with the Ukraine. Was there sort of a balanced narrative? No. Overnight, many people didn't even know, where is Ukraine? I have no idea. Is it somewhere east of China? Is it the, the capital of Canada? Nobody knew. And overnight, suddenly, everybody was backing the Ukraine. You know, and bad boy, bad boy, bad boy, Russia. When you see at the exact same time where NATO is trying to push, push, push into many different countries at the same time, like uh, Sweden, Turkey, Finland, and to take over there with the help of the Russian threat. So suddenly we have this whole thing. And here, once again, a one-sided, completely one-sided 
pro-Israel, pro-Israel, pro-Israel. When when you look at the facts, it should be like, what? It's it's like if if Mike Tyson is up for his next new big, and you're in Las Vegas, and he comes up on stage, and everybody's uh, celebrating, yay, Mike, 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 the hardest hitting guy in world history. And up on the other side, you got like a two year old in diaper, in diapers, and you're like, wait a second. This really doesn't make any sense at all, does it? But here with the with the emperor's new clothes, that's what you're looking at. And we're being told, no, it's equal. It's actually Mike Tyson being attacked by the baby. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I agree with you 100%. It's outrageous. It's a very one-sided affair. And here in America, the propaganda is running high. And I had no idea that RFK Jr. was on uh, that, that side of the, the, the coin there. But... You know, he says a lot of things that uh, I like, but Me then, uh, but then he goes off and says this other stuff, and then I think, oh yeah, he's he's not right for for this. None of them are. Do, do you know I'm not into politics. I'm not I'm, either. I'm, I've been spending four decades trying to figure out what happened to his father and his uncle Oof, and Martin yeah. Luther King and right. many of these other ones because they were taken out. They were standing up against the same very same forces, and they paid the ultimate price. So, but I have no idea nowadays also with, with manipulation of, of imagery and stuff. So who knows, who if knows this what's even, going on, if this is even real, you know, well, he did that because I saw him. Well, did you, I mean, nowadays I can, I can create a bot of myself, you know, whereas yeah. it's me answering questions and I'm even on film doing it, but it's not me. So who knows and how how easy it would be to destroy everything he had built up during covid and and all these things just with a few of these pro uh, pro massacre type of uh, things so i i'm not pointing at him now i'm saying if if that is true then he's out the window when it comes to me which I is agree. very sad I don't like because, any of them, though, Oli, to be honest with you. I don't like any uh, sitting president or current president. I mean, they've all done um, horrendous things. And by the way, going back to Israel for a second here and all the things that have been going on, the Ukraine, Taiwan, you know, uh, Biden actually had requested to send them like $100 billion uh, in aid to these uh, countries. And I, I think they're still continuing to aid all of them. And Israel already receives $3.8 billion per year from the United States in a 10-year agreement that began back in, I think, 2016, if I, cor uh, if I call correctly. And uh, it's outrageous how much money my government keeps uh, forking over to all these uh, foreign governments, Oli. So I ask you, if he's got like 3.4 billion in his back pocket, or whatever that was, to a foreign country, now Israel, poor Israel, who has only been funded like more than 30 billion over the last 10 years or something like that. Right. Poor, poor, I'm not talking politics, I'm talking about what is going on. <clears throat> so he has these money in his back pocket because he can actually transfer them and click transfer, whoop, there you go, the money is in their account. So the money was there. Where was the money for the people of Maui? That's only like weeks ago. That's right. They they have been given seven hundred per household, yeah. not per person, per household. There are no where's where are all of these C one thirties coming in and out with food and and uh, you know toilets, water, fuel, all of that is that flowing in and out? You know of, of Maui as we speak. There are no planes whatsoever. In the, I think it was in the 90s, there was a big uh, uh, natural disaster in Maui. There, I think for about, I, I heard uh, this pilot, I think for about six weeks, there were helicopters and planes going in and out, in and out, nonstop. Here we see zero. Zero. What does that tell you? Something bizarre is going on. Not at all. It's just the exact opposite of what you're told. You're told it was a wildfire. Please explain the anomalies of the fire. We're talking about that it was a fire that spread with the, because of high winds and, and all of these things. Okay, please explain to me the laser light precision of some buildings, some areas, even around cul-de-sacs, where nothing is touched of value and the other one is leveled with the ground. 
We are told it's because, well, the electricity was left on. Well, would that explain for the anomalies of that? Would that explain for the whole long line of years of planning, replacing people in key positions in Maui to be able to carry this one out as an incredible rape and plunder, mass murder, rape and plunder. That's the name of the game. Land grab, overtake and turn it into the first world's smart island. Yikes. I mean, this has been the the architecture, the plans of the new Maui, the smart smart island Maui. The plans have already been there for years, and they follow the exact outlines of the destruction of the building. That's crazy. I mean, I mean, really, it's like when you, what are the chances? I ask you, what are the chances? What are the chances that uh, the U.S. Army uh, Army Corps were there? mapping the islands in in january of 2023 you have it on the local news don't worry if you see green laser light coming out of the sky tonight it's only the u.s army corps that are there mapping the island okay okay and the u.s army corps also uh today we have we are proud to present the operation blue tarp okay blue roof sorry blue roof blue roof right so Operation Blue mm-hmm. Roof was <clears throat> has been presented in Florida and in other areas as well, where in after hurricanes, people have been able to contact uh, the Army Corps and for free get blue tarp on their houses, you know, as protection. Protection for the next hurricane? Have tarp ever made a difference in a <laughs> right. hurricane? I don't think so. Yeah. But when you tra- backtrack this company, it is uh, it protects you from 5G and EMF. What on earth kind of tarp is that? Okay, so we look in these areas, especially on the western side of Florida, up where up there, and in other areas as well, and all of the places that were being painted uh, with blue roofs on Maui. More or less, all of the celebrities on Maui That's had right. their roofs painted blue, and then it turns out that the laser. Uh, that was used was uh, was hitting everything except blue items. That's right. why there's a lot of blue items and blue cars not affected. What are the chances? What are the chances? So, yeah, exactly. Like, what are the chances that there were insider trading before September 11th? I, I mean, it's we know that same. story. <laughs> yes, it's, it's the same. And so you have with Operation Blue Roof. What I believe I'm speculating now, but what it seems to me is like after these hurricanes. They've gone in, the hurricanes, look at the uh, the way these uh, hurricanes are moving. They're not following natural weather patterns. They come in over a certain area and they stop, like Catherine, uh, Hurricane Catherine. They just stop and they stay, 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 stay. And that area, which is high real estate value for a future rebuild, will be completely leveled. And these, the population that are mostly minorities and poor, out the way many times found in in mass graves afterwards it's horrible but anyway so in these areas uh, this uh, u.s army corps uh, that you just happened to map maui and hawaii with green laces in january before this happened then they they offer this whole thing and you, so you could apply for that job what i believe is what happened was that they were planning or are planning on hitting these places with with the same type of directing any weapons in the future. So what they do is they go out and say, that's a keeper. We put blue tarp on that one because it has uh, it has value and is part of our grid for the, the smart city uh, future here. That place over there, I'm going to dump it. it. Let's just uh, throw it to the wolf's broom. So only the blue ones uh, will be left and the other one will not. The, these operations are done over years. It's like one year and then it happens like two, three years down the line. This is not just something that happens like, oh, like, oh my God, like that. Not at all. Not at all. And then, if I can continue, unfortunately, I live in Indonesia where this is happening as well. As part of these operations, the way I see it, if you look at uh, one of the things that I specialize in seeing in uh, modus operandi how are these operations carried out and one of the play of the uh, ingredients in these uh, operations are gene modified mosquitoes a gene drive mosquito with the volbachia volbachia bacteria 
they are being released in the millions in different areas of the world where for different reasons like on maui they released uh, they started releasing them in march the attack happened on the 8th of august but in march they started releasing uh, 10 or 12 million of these mosquitoes every two weeks and they're going to continue according to the official plan for 20 years wow and it's because of a very rare bird species that is uh, being threatened by let's see 20 year 20 say again come again 20 years wow so here in, in Bali, yeah and the the thing is what what uh, they've done that they've released them in florida uh, I think in the state of New York, they've in uh, California in certain areas, in Burkina Faso in West Africa, in uh, Brazil, and and it's a uh, it's different in different areas. In certain areas, they say it's because of the dengue fever. That's what they say here. In other areas, it's because of the malaria. In other areas, in like Maui, it's for the avian flu. But the mosquitoes are exactly the same. And there's a gene drive there. These are manipulated, uh, made in factories. And the owner of the factory is Bill Gates. Bill Gates, uh, yeah. And so here we have uh, a planned release of uh, 20, 12 million every, no, sorry, 10 million. Uh, it, they will start on the 13th of November and 10 million uh, every two weeks until mid-March next year next week next year so they would be released in 44 different uh, uh, villages that's crazy it is unbelievably crazy because what i think what they're doing is the when you i spoke to michael jaco who i'm mm -hmm. on his show every second week and these mosquitoes were released a, a few years ago and michael says they become super aggressive so he has this thing on him to sort of sending out the sounds to keep them away. He even took photos of one that they sapped, and it just looks bizarre. But anyway, the first couple of years, it seems like the numbers of cases goes down because uh, what they're doing is they're, they're uh, breeding females without the mouth so that they can't bite. It's only the, the females that bite. Right. But within two generations, like that, and they have a, a lifespan of, I think, two weeks, so within a month, the, the natural inhabitancy of mosquitoes is destroyed, as far as I understand. And from then on, all the new generations just keep adding to this, this, this gene drive to them. So completely unnatural mosquitoes with God knows what the hell they have. Because now we have in Australia people that are starting to have incredible like uh, flesh-eating wounds. I'm sorry to say to bring this type of horror news to you. No worries. But, but when you look at the way this has been planned, I mean, in 2005, uh, Gates were doing a TED talk. He, re he was he released them, yeah. with oh, yeah. mosquito, and he released them in, in the audience uh, saying, no, no, I'm only kidding. But anyway, so it seems like these mosquitoes have been part of a plan for a long, long time. I There's agree. Also, yeah, uh, these are, these are uh, genetically modified mosquitoes, ladies and gentlemen. They're not natural and uh, Bill Gates obviously responsible. And when COVID first started appearing out on um, in animals out in like the forest, uh, Oli, I thought this is being uh, intentionally spread by mosquitoes. In my opinion, you can do a lot with mosquitoes. Yeah. This is this is the scary thing. This is really the scary thing. So, <clears throat> so what I see, what I think is going on, is that it's the smart smart city agenda the internet of things how they're trying to push us into cities controlled by them right uh, in these digital grids and so nature which is now our escape where we can go out and recharge and enjoy here suddenly with these mosquitoes nature is going to be weaponized and it's very easy with the uh, geo blocking or geo uh, yeah geo blocking with frequencies as well to keep the the mosquitoes on the outside you have all of these things you can buy online that you can't hear them but it keeps the mosquitoes away so it's very simple with with sound to just keep them out so, so here we have a possible future where the outside of whatever area they want us inside will be with these mosquitoes that will just uh, buy uh, eat us alive almost you know
And, and the CDC, if you look at the CDC in 12, 12, uh, 2011, they had, I don't know if they've taken it away now, but they had it for years and years, a special sector, uh, section for the zombie apocalypse. What on earth? They had posters printed, they had all kinds of stuff on the CDC's own website. Yeah, I remember. What on earth <laughs> was that? Yeah, they're playing if some not, nefarious things out there. Yeah. So uh, I ask you uh, from inside of Bali here, we, we've started a massive, massive thing that has gone all the way up to the president here and all because the Indonesian people and government is not aware of it at all. They're not aware. They have no idea what's going on. And they have been pumped with this propaganda saying that Gates is this beautiful, incredible person that is so generous to donate all of these uh, horror things to us. So if you can please uh, make people aware of the situation here, it's not only here, but it's in many other places in the world, but that these mosquitoes, they need to be stopped. They are, you can go to Gates Info, that's a website where they talk about they've got these mosquito factories down in South, uh, South America and other places where they, they breed billions of them and then they're transported around in the world. It's, uh, this is not comfortable. And so, yeah, on the 13th of November, hopefully we will manage to delay the release because uh, I've been on Zoom calls also with um, people in the government and in the laboratories here. They have no clue. They have no clue. And like the people in the in the labs here that are very proud of what they're doing, they said, but yeah, but we released it in a few small villages and over three years we've seen no negative effects. Mm. But we, you're messing with Mother Nature here. Yeah. Have you have you checked the birds that eat the, the gene-modified mosquitoes? Have you seen, are there any anomalies in their eggs in the birth of these are uh, that on loan when the mosquitoes die and they they sort of rot on the ground is there any ch change in there this is not something you get over three years i mean people get cancer 20 years later after being exposed to stuff you know who knows what you're dealing with and with that amount because it's not just sort of like a few hundreds here and there we're talking like millions and millions and millions being released again and again and again and again so the natural balance any kind of natural enemy or you know swallows and and uh, birds and stuff that would uh, that would keep the natural balance they have no chance whatsoever with they would just be completely overrun by these mosquitoes so yeah we need to do something michael and we need to do it fast That's so right. this is not when you've got spare time this is the time, and the one you've been waiting for is you. So please help yourself and the rest of us and all generations, future generations to come. And let's transcend this madness. Because if you look at it, it's not difficult to see that they are being, they are playing us. And how can they play us? Because we're brain Washed. deactivated, to say it politely. We're just not aware. And it's time to activate what we were being given so generously with. It's normally located between our ears. And just see, from my point of view, what I use is Farmer Brown logic. One plus one equals two. It doesn't matter who tells me that it, if it, they say one plus one equals 187, I know that it's not true. I don't know why they're lying. I don't know why they're trying to manipulate me, but I know it's not true. And with so many things nowadays, just please use your normal logic and say, does this make any sense? Who benefits from me believing this? And you will start seeing a completely different picture because the world is not crazy. It's just inverted. It is upside down. And like Dick, uh, Dick uh, what was his name? Dick Chasey, the head of the CIA in the 90s, he said, we have succeeded the day when everything the U.S. population believes our lives, that's the day we will have succeeded. And I tell you, we're very close to, when you look at the official narrative, more or less all of it is controlled by them and turned upside down. My goodness. Once again, Oli, I do appreciate your time here. Thank you for being a part of the program. And your website, of course, is lightonconspiracy.com. Definitely go check that out, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, Oli, always a honor and pleasure to have you on the program. 
And I look forward to talking to you again the, the next time we do this, Holy. Thank you, Michael. And it's light on conspiracies. Light on there's conspiracies. There's more than one going on. I just want to say I'm, I'm very sorry if I've been the bringer of bad news. I'm very sorry if I scared you. I've been, I'm been scared myself. <laughs> I'm not really sure how to deal with these type of things because uh, how, how do you deal with super psychos? Right. You know, like, uh, because this is what we're up against. That's I, right. Michael, Chip Tatum, uh, this CIA whistleblower who mm. was way, way up there uh, in Black Ops. He was, uh, like I said, the commander of George Bush Sr.'s private hit team, Chip Tatum. Chip Tatum, okay. Yeah, I said to him, mm. I asked him one time, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand the mindset beho- behind all of this. What, what the hell is going on? And he said, the only reason you don't understand it is because you're not a psychopathic killer. If you were, this would make perfect sense. I like so that answer. That, that is what we're up against. The, the mindset is based on pure evil. And I think we, the people, are beautiful, beautiful individuals that just needs to get off the, our butts and stand in truth. I'm not saying violently, but just stand up and say, Abs, this is so not happening. This is not happening. It doesn't matter what you say. I'm not going to do what you want me to do. I'm not going to be part of this. I'm not going to stand quiet in the background and say nothing. I will stand in my truth. And that will, I tell you, as soon as you start showing courage and bravery, these super cowards back down. They are incredible cowards, incredible cowards. So when they start seeing real bravery and real courage, they, they just like, oh my God, oh my God, and they back down. So it's, there's so few, we're so many. This is a piece of cake. Let's just do it, transcend this whole thing and have a cold beer on the other side and celebrate absolute incredible future together. Very nice. Thank you so much, Oli. Really appreciate the words. And yes, nothing more frightening than reality. And who knows what's going to happen next here, Oli. Things uh, could go either, well, well, they could go either nice and pleasant or they can get extremely out of hand and only time will tell. And Oli, once again, thank you so much for being here, my friend. We'll do it again on the other side. Thank you so much. And it's up to us. The one you've been waiting for, I repeat myself, is you. And there he goes, boys and girls. That was my guest, Oli Damagard. And I do want to thank all of you out there for pressing play. And of course, we will return very, very shortly. If you want bonus material, please go to patreon.com slash Lord Michael Deacon or go to michaeldeacon.com. Sign up right here. Become a member on YouTube. The fun doesn't stop there, by the way. If you want to take us on the road, please go ahead and search for the Michael Deacon program. And boom, there we are. And with that said, the world is a mysterious place, and life itself is a mystery. Until next time, good night.